let's take a closer look at the neuromuscular junction. And many students get really bunched up at this point in the content, and it's because there is just a lot going on here, a ton of detail. So let's start here and try to break things down and see if we can manage this into more bite-sized chunks. So the first thing I want to point out is this term neuromuscular. It's easy for us to kind of just quickly blip over that, but this helps remind us the two major body systems that we're looking at and the two major parts that we're looking at as well. So neuromuscular is going to involve the nervous system and the muscular system. So what part of the nervous system? Well, that's a unit four topic for my students. However, um, we're getting a little bit of an introduction here, um, which will really help if you see any kinds of terms related to what we're gonna look at here in unit four and, and even some in AMP2. So this structure right here is the end of a neuron. We call this the synapse. It's the part that's going to connect to either another neuron or in this case, a muscle cell, which is why it is neuromuscular. It is a neuron meeting up with a muscle cell. And so um, this part right here, again called the synapse, uh, is going to contain some special parts. So let's start up here. We will have depolarization. Okay, remember that is just a term that means that we are um, increasing the membrane potential. We're going in a more positive direction. So we typically start at a negative millivolt number and as positively charged ions kind of go across that cell membrane, it each of those plus ones are gonna just do, 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 make that more positive. And so that is what depolarization is. So when a signal comes down this neuron, it will depolarize. And our first key player here is calcium. Okay, so what it does is this calcium is going to come into the synapse or the synaptic bulb is another term you may see read here. Once calcium comes in, it is going to communicate to these little vesicles, these little pouches, that they're gonna need to do some moving. Now, what is inside those pouches? Well, this molecule called acetylcholine. And acetylcholine is a really important uh, neurotransmitter. So neurotransmitter just means it's basically a communicator of the nervous system. It's gonna relay a message or tell this body part to do something. And generally how we see acetylcholine work is that it is an excitatory neurotransmitter, meaning that whenever we see acetylcholine coming into play in this part or that part, it's gonna make the body do something. Other things will make the body stop. This one tells it go. Okay, so that's why we call it an excitatory neurotransmitter. Um, why is acetylcholine important? Well, we need it to make our muscles contract. Okay, where that, that's the specific example here, but in a lot of other parts of the body, we need acetylcholine to basically tell our bodies to go. So a signal comes down this neuron. It's gonna make calcium come in to this portion of the neuron, the synaptic bulb, and it's gonna tell these little pouches, these little vesicles. We call these synaptic vesicles. It's gonna say, hey, you vesicles that have all these important acetylcholine molecules, that's what ACH stands for. I need you to release. I need you to leave this place and go out into the open space, which is called the cleft. That's what this area right here is. That's the synaptic cleft. So once acetylcholine, or pardon me, once these vesicles migrate down to this portion right here, we can see those acetylcholine mo molecules get released into this open space called the uh, synaptic cleft. When they are in this cleft, they are going to attach to these channels right down here, okay? Now these channels are connected to the muscle cell. That's the muscular part of the neuromuscular junction. Okay, and so what acetylcholine does is it is going to make a connection to these channels 
and it's going to open those up and what that does specifically here it is going to allow sodium to go in and sometimes i say sodium sodi in it's going to go into the muscle cell and when it does that it is going to depolarize the muscle cell membrane and remember when all these positive ones or positively charged ions are going across the cell membrane what does that do to that negative number it's going to make that more positive and so that happening all along here will eventually cause a reaction down the line once this is done we have this really important enzyme within this cleft called acetylcholinesterase and that A's is what reminds you that we're looking at an enzyme and what that enzyme is going to do it's going to take those acetylcholine molecules in this cleft and it's going to bring it back up here so that the acetylcholine goes back in to the uh, synaptic bulb and that's really important because when those little acetylcholine molecules go back in it means these channels close up and ultimately that muscle is not going to receive the signal to contract to shorten so that's really important so what are the implications of that well big picture if we don't have that enzyme it means that the muscle has only received the directions to contract or shorten so if we don't have the enzyme to get rid of that it can't un undo itself so it'll stay contracted likewise if we don't have enough acetylcholine up here we won't give the muscle the instructions to contract so we have a problem either way it's either if we don't have enough acetylcholine the muscle won't contract or if we don't have the enzyme acetylcholinesterase it won't tell the muscle to relax or rather it won't remove the molecule that told it to uh, to contract okay so let's let's kind of go back and just summarize this again try to follow along neuromuscular junction that is the meeting place the junction where a neuron and a muscle cell come together the signal comes down it basically tells calcium to come in to the synaptic bulb when calcium comes in uh, and I'm going over some some really minute details that y'all don't have to know that's okay for my class but calcium comes in and it tells these synaptic vesicles that have acetylcholine inside of them hey go to the outside i need you to leave okay i need you to put that acetylcholine uh, acetylcholine into the cleft so it's gonna spit that acetylcholine out here it's gonna travel across the cleft and meet up with all these little channel pro uh, membranes right here or uh, protein membranes pardon me and when acetylcholine comes here it's going to tell sodium to go into the muscle cell and then that's a, a cascade which is better shown on another image. After all that happens, remember we have acetylcholinesterase. The A's tells us it's an enzyme. That basically tells the acetylcholine, okay, uh, the, the choline in particular, to go back into this synaptic uh, bulb, a uh, knob, pardon me, so that all of this can kind of stop. So I hope going over these steps with a picture helps you better understand the basics of the neuromuscular junction.